Hi boys and girls, welcome back. Today I'm reading another Patricia Palaka book, Holes in the Sky. I'm excited, this is a newer one for me. But before we start, we're going to do our riddle. Why do bees have sticky hair? Think about it. Here we go. Holes in the Sky by Patricia Palaka. One night it was too hot to, hot to sleep in my grandmother's house, so we carried our blankets out into the yard. A custom my babushka taught me from our village in Rushka. Babushka, my brother and I, all sat and I all on the same blanket. We gazed up at the stars. You both know the stars really are, don't you? Holes in the sky. The light of heaven showing through them and from the other side. Richie and I looked at each other. What are the holes for? I asked. They are the way into heaven. When it's our time, we must leave the earth. That's where we go, to the other side. But Richie and I didn't know was that it was almost Babushka's time. She was ill and managed to keep the secret from us. Soon I must go there, but I'll be watching over you both through those holes each and every night, she told us. Then I'll send you a sign so you'll know. It wasn't more than a month later that my beloved babushka went through those holes. Even though she had tried to prepare us, I was devastated. There would never be another babushka. Soon after, Grandpa sold our farm. He was going to live with us, with Uncle George in Indiana. Mom got a teaching job way out in California, and we were moving there. The drive took three days. As we crossed the desert at night, I'd look up at the dazzling array of stars that crowded the skies. I found myself whispering, please, Babushka, you promised you'd give me a sign that you're there. As soon as we arrived in Oakland, a realtor found us the perfect house and mom bought it. It was a huge old brown shingle place on the crest of a steep hill on Ocean View Drive. From the front porch, we could see the Bay Bridge and beyond, it, the Golden Gate Bridge. Funny thing was, it wasn't golden at all. It was actually orange. But what I noticed after the bridges was that our lawn and the lawn of all the other houses up and down the street were brown and dried up, dead. The drought realtor said, we badly need rain. No one is allowed to water outside with a sprinkler or hose. Shaking her head, the realtor opened the front door and let us in. It was sunny and friendly. I instantly felt like home. Mom, Richie, and I all had our own rooms. I discovered a small window in my closet that pushed open to reveal a clear view of the sky. That first night, I stood on a chair, opened the window, and whispered to my babushka, I miss you so much. I need that sign, booby. But it didn't come. One day, there was a loud knock at my front door. When I answered, a boy was standing there with a paper basket full of freshly picked flowers. I wondered where they come from. With the drought and all, I had never seen anyone like him up close before. He had brown skin and curly black hair that framed his face. Want to buy a May basket, he asked through a toothy grin. I looked at him from a long time, for a long time. It ain't May, I said sternly. He completely ignored my observations. The O'Learys used to live here. What have you guys done to the place? See for yourself, I snapped and motioned him in. Name Stuart, lived right up the block, he chirped as he went from room to room. I was fascinated by him, so I just followed him and listened. When he got to the refrigerator, he examined just about everything in it. He noticed the art table. Hey, look, you have a ton of paper. We can make thousands of May baskets. He took a seat, grabbed a pair of scissors. I was so curious about him, I just sat down and started making it. May baskets too. We must have made 10 baskets. Easy, I didn't have the heart to ask what he got, where he got the flowers or where we'd get ours. I didn't need to. We filled Stuart's wagon and walked up to his own house. His lawn was brown like everyone else's, but there in front of his yard, was a string of rose bushes. We use buckets of water we save from washing machine and sinks to water those flowers, he said. He must have read my mind.
We picked enough to fill our paper baskets, then began to amble down the block, selling them at every house. My neighbors weren't like the folks back home. In Michigan, pretty much everyone looked alike. Here, people were so different. Across the street from was the Martinez family from Mexico. Next to them, the Zidanas from Yemen, and the Bartarians, an Armenian family who owned a restaurant on College Avenue. The Cho family had a gift shop on the corner. On the other corner was a black Muslim bakery that Stewart said made the biggest and best cookies in the whole world. We'd almost sold all the baskets and we were making our way back to Ocean View when we passed a house that Stewart took me across the street to pass. The yard looked like a jungle, dark and buried in dusty brown vines and weeds. I almost couldn't see the house. Old Lady Bocce's place, he, he hissed. She's mean to all us kids. Calls the police if we play stickball on the street near her house. I saw the curtains, curtains part slightly, and I knew the lady inside was watching us. We bought ice cream for a bunch of kids in the neighborhood with what we'd earned and finally called it a day. The best day ever. That night before bed, I looked up at the stars from my window. Babushka whispered, I met the greatest kid today. You just love him. Then I sighed and watched the sky for a sign from her. But there was no sign. Stuart and I became best friends. I learned that he had three sisters and a younger brother, a mom and a dad who worked, and a grandmother, Miss Eula, who'd take care of the kids and the house, and whom everyone in the neighborhood just loved. I sure wanted her to meet her. Then one day, Stuart came over and said his grandmother wanted to meet me. In the moment we walked into her kitchen, it smelled like, smelled like my boobies' kitchen, with the heavy aroma of freshly baked bread, the sweet scent of sugar cookies. Just as I rounded the corner, there she was, Miss Eula Mae Walker, standing with her back to us, stirring a crock pot on a sturdy cast iron wood stove, just like my boobies back home. Grandmommy, she's here, the girl I've been telling you about. Sweet, Stuart said. Miss Eula turned and looked right at me. Grinnell, she sang out. My middle name, he whispered. So this is the child, she cried. This is her, Stuart announced, motioning toward me. Well, baby dear, she said, you come right over here and let me give you some sugar. Then she threw open her arms and I jumped into her hug. Her ample embrace wrapped completely around me and lifted me off the floor. I didn't want to let go. Grinnell tells me the two of you have be met because of flowers. I nodded and grinned at Stuart. Did he tell you about my secret guard? I gave Stuart a puzzled look. It would give me pleasure to show it to you myself. She smiled as she led us out back porch where we stepped into Miss Eula's glorious garden. It looked like something out of a storybook. Enormous rose bushes cluttered with giant blooms gave wondrous perfume in the air around us. Resplendent with bougainvilleas trailed completely around the fence. They were bird baths everywhere full of fluttering sparrows splashing water as they drenched little hands. The yard was alive with flittering butterflies and hummingbirds drinking from cascading wisteria. I was breathless. On the back porch stood dozens of buckets. Miss Eula saw me looking. That's how I keep the flowers healthy, by pouring gray water on them every day. Bath water, washing machine, even dishwasher. I could hardly take it in all of the beauty. You know, baby dear, she said there was another backyard garden in this block that was even more beautiful than this one. I could see Stuart already knew the answer. Verna Bakis, Miss Eula said. That mean old crab, Stuart mumbled. Her yard sure looks awful now. So full of dry weeds and brambles and vines you could barely see the house. Miss Eula thought for a moment. Verna was my best friend, still really is. But since her son Angelo died, she hasn't been the same. I didn't even know she had a son, Stuart lured it out. She and I planted our gardens just about the same time Miss Eula tugged on one of we that was intruding in her hostess. We helped each other. Her garden was magnificent, gorgeous. It looked like something out of Italy, and fountain statues and lovely gray barber with huge friendly table under it where we feasted on her wonderful Italian cooking. She and her son, Angelo, spent hours and hours making it look as beautiful as it was. He was going to be a landscape gardener when he grew up. He had a terrible accident. 
I expect seeing all of your children laughing and playing is a constant reminder that her child is gone. No wonder she's so mean, I whispered. She must be lonely. All of us thought for time. Maybe if we do something really nice for her, she'll know that all of us care and she's not alone, I said suddenly. Maybe we could clean up her yard and bring her garden back to life, Stuart offered. In this drought, that'd take a miracle. Oh, baby dears, Miss Eula said, miracles are everywhere. They're all around just waiting to jump off. I caught my breath. My booby used to say that exact same thing. I think, Grinnell, you have a wonderful idea. Wonderful, Miss Eula crowed. She slapped her chest and laughed from a deep, holy place inside. Let's see now. Fern is going to visit her sister in Fresno in just a few days. She'll leave her house key with me as always. Maybe that's the time to make the miracle happen. Sure enough, it was. By the time Miss Bocci left for her sisters, Miss Eula had gotten everyone on the block to jump in and help bring Miss ba Bocci's garden back to life. They started in the backyard. She knew where everything had once been, so she bustled here and there, directing neighbors to where to slash and where to dig and where to prune. Miss Eula was everywhere. And everyone worked their heads off. The McCalls, the Greens, the Heinlands, the Kadinskys pulling dead weeds, culling shrubs, setting roses free from their tangled vines. The Krebs helped get Stuart get, find me a koi pond that was knee deep in mud. We all cheered when we unearthed the grape arbor at the table. The Zidens hauled in truckloads of debris and cuttings to the dump. Oh, darlings, good work, Miss Eula Cool, to each of us. It took four days to clean up. Now for transplanting the flowers and shrubs that everyone had donated, Miss Eula oversaw it. She knew which plants needed sun, which needed shade, which needed both. Okay, darling, she shouted, now we have to water all this. I couldn't even guess how she organized it on the spot. It wasn't long before the entire neighborhood started bringing water they could spare in buckets and jars and containers. It was a sight to see. That last night, I watched the stars from my window. I felt like my boobie was closer than ever. I knew she'd be proud that I worked so hard to make someone else happy. It was a sure sign some would come, but no sign came. Not a spark, not a shimmer. It wasn't long with the neighbors water, watering those plants by the day before the bright green tender new growth appeared on every single bush plant and shrub. Some of the fathers even repainted the red trim on Mrs. Bocci's house. But when Mrs. Bocci got home, no one heard from her, not even Miss Eula. Then one overcast day, I was at Miss Eula's house when she got an urgent call from Mrs. Bocci. Come with me, baby dear. Sounds like she needs us. When we arrived in Mrs. Bocci's garden, she was kneeling in the middle of her courtyard under a grape arbor, arbor sobbing. You had no right, Eula. No right, she choked out. Stuart and I couldn't understand. Eula, you know why I let this garden die, and because Angelo did. It was his garden. I couldn't bear to see it anymore. She sobbed even harder. Miss Eula knelt next to her. But Verna, Angelo will want you to keep his garden. He loved it so. Wouldn't it be the perfect tribute to him? But she didn't have a chance to answer because a second miracle jumped up with all the standing right there together. And the mitts started to settle over of the garden. One fine droplet fell from the sky. I couldn't believe it. It's rain, Grandmommy. It's rain, Stuart crowed. Miss Eula pulled Miss, Mrs. Bocci to her feet, took her hand. Then Miss Eula took mine, and I took Stuart's, and he took both Mrs. Bocci's. And with the rain pouring down, we now, now started to circle, the four of us together with our faces up in the sky. Angelo's letting you know he wants this garden, Verna. He wants you to flourish with it, Miss Eula whispered softly. That day I found myself wondering why Mrs. Bocci got her sign from Angelo, but my booby hadn't sent me mine. That night, as Stuart and I were in Miss Eula's kitchen helping her wash up the dinner dishes, as Miss Eula and I stood in her sink, we peered out the window at the dazzling array of twink stars twinkling above us. Look at them, will you, baby dear? Look how bright, Miss Eula whispered. I nodded and gazed up at them. Do you know what those really are? She quietly asked. Those are holes in the sky. The light of heaven shining through from the other side. All those we love have left us. 
have moved through them and watch over us. I gasped. I hadn't even told Miss Eula that secret from my booby. Was that a sign? Miss Eula hugged me close and trundled me over to a wood stove and reached for something from the shelf above it. A small bottle of vanilla. She opened it and dabbed some behind each ear. Then she did the same thing to me. Now we both smell delicious, don't we, baby dear? That was it. That was a sign from Booby. It was in front of me all along. Not in the sky, but in Miss Eula herself. From that time on, Miss Eula shared so many things with me. Her lap would always welcome me whenever I needed her comfort and wisdom. Her ample neck was a warm place to nestle. Her grace under fire would seem so effortless touched everyone around her, including me. She wore her dignity like a queenly robe and a jeweled crown, and she taught me that all things reach for the stars, even us. Well, that was a beautiful story. I love stories about gardens. So, why was the bee's hair sticky? Because it used a honeycomb. Get it? <laughs> I miss you. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, boys and girls.